Hey everybody, welcome back to part 7 in our beginner scripting series. Today we're going to be talking about cloning and instancing. Hope you're excited for that. Um, just keep in mind, next video will be loops. I was wrong. Uh, I changed up the order this year. We're going to do instancing and cloning first, and then we'll do loops um, after that. So, hope you're excited for today. Today's all about making new objects through a script. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. But first, let's get to the comment question for today's video. If you could develop a game solo or with a big group, what would you prefer? It's a pe pretty simple question, uh, but yeah, do you prefer working with a group or do you prefer working by yourself? So that's the question for today. Make sure to answer in the comments below, but to, for now, let's get into the next part of our series about instancing and cloning. So uh, let's go ahead and insert a script inside of server script service and just call this instance script. Instance script. Okay, so what is instancing? So instancing is creating a brand new game object from a script. So for example, we could create this brand new part right here, okay, this through a script. We wouldn't have to do it right here, we, we could do it through a script. So this is uh, something that's really fun to do. Um, so let's go ahead and get rid of that part that I just put in to show you guys. Uh, and let's go back into our instancing script. And let's go ahead and get rid of this, and I'm going to show you how we can do this. So first off, I would always say start your instances in a variable. So we can say local my part. So we're creating a brand new variable. Remember, this can be anything. Um, it can be strings, bools, integers, but it can also be game objects. So what is a game object, you may ask? A game object, if you click this plus, is anything in here, anything you can add um, to your game, whether it's a part, a remote event, a script, whatever, okay? But for this, we're going to go ahead and insert a part, and let's, let's go ahead and say local my part equals to instance dot new, and then you have open and close parentheses, okay, and then quotation marks part, or whatever you want to instance. Um, so obviously, uh, this is how you write. I'm assuming you picked that up, but that's how you instance something new. Um, you create a brand new object by saying object by saying instance dot new. So create a brand new thing, open and close parentheses, open and close quotation marks, and whatever is inside of both of those is what you're instancing. For this case, it's a part. Next, well, let's give it a parent. Otherwise, it'll just be an instance, but it won't be anywhere because the script knows we've made it, but we haven't set it to be anywhere yet. So we'll say my part dot parent equals game dot workspace. So as you can see, if we click run, uh, if we look around for the part, it might be in there. Yep, there it is. It's right here under the spawn location. You may have to drag that if you click run um, to see there is our part. It is right there. So before running it or playing it, you might just want to move your spawn over because it will, by default, just kind of uh, spawn in the middle of the map. That's just kind of how it goes because we haven't set a position. Uh, we will do that soon, but not today. So, what else can we do? Well, we can change properties with instances. For example, we can say my part, remember that's the variable, that's our brand new thing, dot brick color equals brick color dot random. Remember that? So we can do this um, right here. So we can give it a random brick color. And to um, practice our functions, let's uh, put this all in a function. So we can say function spawn part, okay? And remember to add an end down here, okay? There we go. So now we have this function called spawn part. And let's just call it a ton of times. Spawn part wait one. Spawn part wait one. Let's call it a few more times. I'm just going to copy and paste this to make it go a bit quicker. There we go. Now we are spawning a ton of parts uh, with a random brick color. So that is how you do instancing. So if we go ahead and play this, as you can see, it's spawning in a new part every time. And uh, make sure you run this because you can actually drag over the part, uh, drag the parts around to see their colors. That's interesting. It picked brown for like all of these. Um, so in once we get into loops next episode, we'll be able to do things like doing all this without having to type it a ton of times. But for now, go ahead and type a ton of spawn parts and waits, okay, and then run it. I believe I showed you how to do that, and maybe just like move these around each time you get a new one. As you can see, it's kind of picking the same color a lot of times, which is interesting. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That is how you can instance parts. You can instance things like an explosion. So maybe once we're done, we want to instance an explosion. We can say local my explosion. You can call it whatever you want. Equals instance dot new explosion. So that's an item, uh, or that's a game object. Watch, um, watch closely. I'm going to insert an explosion into the workspace. 
as you can see, there is an explosion, um, and there is our part. As you can see, it just kind of runs when you um, when you insert it. It automatically just explodes when you create a new one. So we can go ahead and go into our instance script, and we can say my explosion dot parent equals game dot workspace. You can also say workspace, but game dot workspace works fine as well. So we create a brand new explosion and then we parent it to the workspace. Cool. So let's go ahead and run this. And after it spawns a ton of parts, we should see an explosion. There we go, there we go. Boom, and then it just exploded that part way over there. So that's pretty cool. There are, that's instancing. Quickly, um, how can we get rid of these things? Well, we can use colon destroy. So if we wait one second and we wanna get rid of that explosion, just so that there's no unnecessary clutter, we can say my explosion colon destroy open and close parentheses and that just gets rid of it. It's just deleting something through a script. So watch, if I insert an explosion into the workspace, you can see it's still there. It's not really doing anything, so it's kind of clutter. If I click backspace to delete it, that I just destroyed it, and that's how you do it through script. You just say the object you want to do, uh, you want to destroy, and you say colon destroy. That's it. So let's go ahead and run this, and I'm going to open up the workspace for you to see. Let's drag these parts around, and as you can see, an explosion is right here, and it just got destroyed. So there you go. That is um, instancing. Now let's talk about cloning real quick, um, but first... Let's do this one more time because I think that's kind of cool to have all the parts here and the explosion just explode them all Isn't that kind of cool? You can you can play with physics uh, physics in that way. So anyway, there you go That is instancing and destroying. Let's go ahead and get on to cloning. This will be pretty quick So let's insert a script into service script service again, and we'll call this clone script now cloning is kind of like um instancing, but it's cloning something or making something that already already exists. So for example, uh, if we were go uh, to insert a ton of parts, okay, and we put them in a model, if you don't want to know what a model is, you can drag over all of these and hit control G, and now they're all one model together, okay? And we can call this parts, okay? So now we have this model and maybe we just want to clone it. We want to create a brand new one. So we can drag this parts inside of replicated storage and as you can see they've disappeared they're not gone they're just not in the workspace remember i don't know if i mentioned this or not everything inside of the workspace is things that you can see in 3d so all your players parts everything is going to go inside of the workspace if you want to see them otherwise you can store them in something like replicated storage to clone them later so let's go into our clone script and let's go ahead and get rid of this print hello world and let's say local parts clone or whatever you want to name your variable equals to game dot replicated storage this time because we are checking inside of replicated storage for the parts and we can say dot parts uh, colon clone okay and let's also uh, drop a couple lines and put a wait five here because I want to make sure that the parts load in um, and we haven't gotten to something called wait for child which we will soon but now we have this clone as a variable so let's go ahead and parent it to something we can say parts clone dot parent equals game dot workspace so we're putting it inside of the workspace that's where we can see it so after five seconds it should do that and let's go ahead and wait two seconds and we'll say parts clone colon destroy you can do that with clones as well you can do that with anything uh, that's a game object so if we come into the workspace you will notice we have our parts clone and it's now been destroyed but another thing you'll notice if you look in replicated storage, the part is still there. And that's because we cloned it. We made a duplicate of it and we dragged it into the workspace. That's what the script did. It, create, it created a clone. It copied it. Basically, it copied and pasted it, okay? And it dragged it into the workspace for us. So those are instancing and cloning. Um, as you can probably tell, there's a lot we can do with that. Um, like cloning a sword during a round. We could clone a sword inside of replicated storage and give it to all the players once a round starts. So many possibilities. That's instancing and cloning. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to smash that subscribe button, click the like, like button. Um, it, if the next episode is on the screen, it, uh, or if the next episode is up yet, it'll be on the screen. If not, it'll be some other video. Um, and also, if you have questions, like always, drop them in the comments or uh, leave a comment in my Discord server. Either way works. Link down in the description for the server. Um, yeah, and I hope you guys found that helpful. I'll be streaming again soon and coming out with videos. So I'm trying to get a lot of content out there for you guys. Um, so I hope you're enjoying it. So anyway, that's going to wrap up today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.